Volcanoes are amazing natural wonders. But there's still so much about them that we don't know. And that's partially because volcanoes can be dangerous, especially for the scientists trying to study them up close. So that's why we're here at the University at Buffalo's Geohazards Field Station. So do you guys you guys blow stuff up all the time? That's your job? Yes, we do. Are you going to let me press the button? Yes. More than 40 scientists have come from all over the world to safely study simulated volcanic eruptions. In this case, rapid fire explosions. We think about volcanic eruptions as huge and frequent events, but there are about 20 active volcanoes of all sizes erupting on Earth at any given time. In fact, the rapid fire eruptions we're going to study today are far more common than the giant eruptions you see in the news. The things the scientists learn here will help them when they're at the site of a real volcano. The technique is you stick the pipe in the hole and then you shake it and stuff will come out of it because it's a vacuum. I'm sorry, I don't know how to make you this. Can you just explain to me how a vacuum worked? <laughs> That's Dr. Allison Grettinger. She's traveled the world studying volcanoes and she'll be our guide to this volcano summer camp. So, so you basically can be out here digging and playing and not grow up, but also you're like a PhD scientist and your mom's proud. Yeah. My mom's got a good story. Somebody keeps asking, how do you raise a volcanologist? Uh -huh. She goes, you don't, you just get out of their way. <laughs> That's cute. What are we looking at right now? This whole field station is being set up for a series of oh, experiments. No, pink, pink is always 90 degrees. Yeah, so this is pink. That will be orange. We've got lots of different teams. So we have team acoustics, so they're interested in infrasound, so it's just below human hearing. And then related to team infrasound, we've got seismic. Well, we're digging a trench with three different levels to bury seismometers at three different depths. So when the blast occurs, we can study the effects of how that blast wave traveling through the air propagates down into the ground. Awesome. When some of that wave hits the ground, it turns into seismic waves that Greg can measure. His team can use those measurements to determine how much energy was in the initial sound wave. And that's important because it lets them estimate the size of the eruption. They can also predict how high the column of debris and gas that flies from the volcano, called the ash plume, will reach, and how far it could travel. When Kilauea erupted last year, the ash plume reached 30,000 feet. Larger eruptions have produced ash plumes that reach hundreds of thousands of feet all the way up into the stratosphere. And then we have the team on the roof, and they're very interested in capturing the explosions in high speed, as well as we're gonna have thermal infrared, and we're gonna have lots of 4K videos. So this is a 3D 360 camera. They can take videos all around, and then there's two from each side, instead of just one, like most 360 cameras. And this is like your eyes, so it allows you to get a perception of the third dimension. Oh, perception of the third dimension. What are you hoping in your experiments here? What are you hoping to learn from this? So I mainly focus on the deposits, which is all the debris that came out of the hole when we blew it up. It's pretty important to know how far stuff's gonna fly right. and where. How much, how far. Right. That's the short story of what I wanna know. So we need to spray paint our ballistics, mm -hmm. which is really just our ping pong balls. You gotta have volcanologist hands to get this thing up. Ugh. Pinchy, pinchy. We color-coded the ping pong balls and buried them at various depths before the explosion. You're gonna do a lot of science out there. P4G, second ball in the hole. Nailed it. The black and white high-speed camera allow them to track individual ping pong balls during the rapid fire explosions. And that helps Allison figure out which blasts kicked up the deepest dirt. They can even tell how fast some of the ping pong balls are moving and how far they might fly. Accurate predictions of how much debris a volcano will spew and how far the debris will travel is essential. It's how we decide how close to volcanoes people can live and what areas should be evacuated in the case of an eruption. What motivates you to come out here and, and dig holes and bury ping pong balls and all this stuff? What's in it for you? Any volcanologist's motivation is ultimately to help us do better for future crises. Even if we're like, I'm worrying about this ping pong ball from my experiment back here. And so some of these teams are gonna be deploying the same equipment at an active volcano, and they're gonna make sure their measurements are the best they can be because of their time here. Nailed it. How do I look? 100% good? 
Now that all the instruments are in place, it is time to blow stuff up. We've set up four different explosions, each consisting of six blasts. Are you gonna let me press the buttons? Yes. You hit A and D at the same time. When I say fire in the hole, that's when you press the button. You go fire in the hole, and then I go A and D, same time. Yep. Five, four, three, two, one. Fire in the hole. <laughs> Here we go. I'll do it again. Fire and all. Yeah. That is a good one. So what did you guys learn from the you know preliminary stuff? So one of the first things I'm always curious about is how far the farthest thing flew. The furthest thing went in the direction we anticipated, but there was more stuff that flew sideways than I expected. Little volcano summer camp surprise. It's good. That's a good sign. Yeah. Right? Because awesome. if I anticipated everything, why did I do the test? It's sure. Boring, right? right? So we were testing things. We want to learn something. And when we're wrong, sometimes that's the best way to learn. Hey, I found a pink ball. And that, that one was the deepest. All right. What's our bingo code? P who has P4F? You do. P4. It's mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah.